Well, good morning. Good morning. We're so glad you're here so we can all worship together. First things first, we have a birthday girl. Yes, we do. Donna. Mrs. Donna Peterson. Uh-huh. Has gained another year. Happy birthday. Okay, announcements. Youth movie night is tonight at 6 p.m. in the youth room. The UMW will meet on Tuesday at 10 a.m. in the parlor. This is open to any lady in the church. They would love to have you join them. Coffin Memorial Blood Drive will take place this Thursday from noon to 6.30 p.m. in our FEC. Rotary Barbecue lunch tickets are available in the church office for $10. It will take place from 11.30 to 1 p.m. this Friday, May the 6th, at the Texas County Activity Center. Christian cowboy guitarist Barry Ward will be here to play some special music next Sunday, May the 8th, for both services. The Ladies Bible Study is Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. and Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. over God's Relentless Love for You by Jennifer Coward. We would love for you to come be part of our wonderful group and to share in fellowship and devotion. And of course, we have the Methodist Men's Breakfast yum, yum, yum. every Wednesday morning, 6.30 to 7.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Bring a friend, join us for good food, fellowship, and devotion. And the Early Watch Prayer Group is still meeting at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the chapel. Come and join them when you can. Daily Devotions. Pastor Dave encourages everyone to enjoy a quiet time with God each day. Yes. And pastoral, pastoral visitations. We want to be a church family where you're known, loved, and supported. Pastor Dave is committed, committed to visiting each family of our church. This can be at your home or in his home or at a restaurant. Please let him know when a good day and time will be to visit with you. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Join me in the call to worship. The heavens declare God's glory, and the skies proclaim his work. Day after day, they speak, and night after night, they reveal knowledge. The word of God is perfect, refreshing the soul. The word of God is right, giving joy to the heart. The word of God is radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure and will last forever. The word of God is firm, and all who obey it are made righteous. The word of God is more precious than gold, than much pure gold. The word of God is sweeter than honey, straight from the honey. The word of God warns us of danger and rewards us when we obey it. May the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts, and the activities of our lives be pleasing in your sight, Almighty God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Let's all stand together and sing wonderful words of life.
You may be seated. So very glad to see each of you with us today. It is my prayer and my earnest hope that each of us will sense the presence of God and know the power of God at work in our lives each and every day. As we were singing that beautiful hymn, I was reminded a lot of disciples decided to leave Jesus and go back to their former way of life. He challenged them. He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be my disciple. And they got offended and they left. And then he looked at his disciples and he said, the close ones, do you also want to leave? And they said, no, Lord. You have the words of eternal life. Who else can we go to, huh? And that is the truth. Christ speaks to us from eternity and draws us into eternity with him. He was in the beginning before anything was created. And as we get to know him and follow him, we discover he has the words of life, everlasting life. Join me today as we pray. Our theme today is the Bible, the word of God, the communication that God engages in each of our lives, drawing us to himself. Not by bread alone is our prayer. Let's pray together. Man does not live by bread alone, but by beauty and harmony, truth and goodness, work and recreation, affection and friendship, aspiration and worship. Man does not live by bread alone, but by the splendor of the starry firmament at midnight, the glory of the heavens at dawn, the gorgeous blending of colors at sunset, the luxuriant loveliness of magnolia trees, the sheer magnificence of mountains. Man does not live by bread alone, but by the lyrics and sonnets of poets, the mature wisdom of sages, the holiness of saints, the biographies of great souls, the life-giving words of Holy Scripture. Man does not live by bread alone, but by being faithful in prayer, responding to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, taking up the cross and following the living Christ, finding and doing the loving will of God, now and eternally. Amen. Today we are <coughs> blessed to have Mary Ellen Lane with us, and I'm going to ask Mary Ellen if she would come forward at this time. Mary Ellen is going to share testimony with us, and as she comes forward, I want to challenge each of our members to think about your own walk with God, whether it's a reflection over your whole journey or a portion of it, and prepare a testimony because we would love to hear from each of you along the way as to how God has revealed himself to you and worked in your life. If you want to go right up there to the lectern, Mary Ellen, let me help you. Thank you. And Mary Ellen's going to share with us today, and I'm so glad for her to share with us. <clears throat> you might pray for me. I'm always afraid when I get in front of a crowd to talk. <laughs> well, let's do that right now. Okay. Lord, we do pray for Mary Ellen. And many of our members who feel very nervous if they've got to speak in front of a crowd, give her a sweet peace, a confidence. I pray that she will sense your presence and use her testimony to encourage us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen. Well, I want to tell you a little bit about what I've been through with God. There's a a song that says, our uh, life is like a mountain railroad with an engineer that's brave. We must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. And I pray that God has helped me to do this. He's been through my life with me and all the ups and downs that I've been through. He's, he's watched over me in every way. There's so many things that I could tell that he, it's been remarkable. I don't know how he's put up with me sometimes. <laughs> but it's, it's always, always been him. I've always had him there with me by my side. And I have 
I really praise him for this because he was really with me when the COVID hit. I uh, did never thought about getting the COVID. I thought, well, I don't really go anywhere. I'm, I'm not around a lot of people. But uh, I had a visitor and they had COVID and I didn't realize it and they didn't either. But anyway, Zane was there and we got it the same time. And that was in September, around the 12th, 13th, somewhere around there. And uh, I didn't realize that I even had it. I, I thought, well, I think I do feel a little bit bad, but I'm not that bad. I've, I've felt bad before, but I did. I was tested, and yes, I had it. And so uh, Dallas, my daughter, she, uh, she came over and she told Jim, she said, I think I better stay here with mom tonight. She said, she's not really doing good. So she stayed with me and uh, she kind of helped me in. And then it, a week went by and I didn't get any better and I wasn't breathing that good. And so Dee, my daughter from Idaho, came, and uh, we stayed. I stayed with them there in my house. We, I didn't go to the, the hospital. I didn't really go to a doctor. Dallas had some ivermectin, and so she brought it over, and she started giving me that. And uh, anyway, when Dee came, she realized that she said she looked at my eyes and she said I was dying. She said she could tell by my eyes that there was no life there. Well, they got an oxygen tank and this oxygen tank was so noisy. I couldn't believe how noisy it was. But they put it right there by the head of my bed and put that thing in my nose and I'm supposed to breathe this and I couldn't sleep. So I took this thing out of my nose, threw it on the machine, shut the machine off, and went to sleep. Well, Dee came in. She, it was during the night, they was getting me up every hour, making me go to the bathroom, making me walk. And she uh, saw what I had done. She's very angry. She said, Mom, why do you think we got that for you? But anyway, I told her, I said, it's no good. I can't, I can't take that. So she, uh, we tried, they tried to start it again. It wouldn't start. The machine was, I guess it must have been going out or something. Anyway, they got another machine and uh, I used it and it was quieter, much quieter. So I did pretty good then by that. But they, Dallas and, and Dee both are God's children and they laid their hands on me and they prayed for me night and day. They kept me going night and day. With God's help, he brought me through. And I tell you, I, I praise his name because I was, I was so upset that uh, Zane was still really doing bad and we prayed for him. And God brought him through several times. But we were going on into our second month of having it. And uh, he, was, he was doing real good. And just a few days before he passed, he, was, he called me and uh, well, he, at that no, it was the day that he passed that he called me. But uh, anyway, I told him, I said, Zane, I said, weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I thought, I was thinking that God would really, because we had asked God to help him, but it wasn't uh, his time. 
they say our hair on our head is numbered and our days are limited. So he, he knows when we're going and he has a time for each one of us to go. And so I think it must have been Zane's time to go. I have, I asked God, I said, help me. This was several weeks before he, anything happened to him. I said, help me to make it through if you're gonna take him because I won't be able to stand it. But God helped me. He brought me through. He, he gave me the courage to accept it. And I have, I have accepted it pretty good, but I still miss him. And I know Nancy does terribly. She has her hands full. I love her so much. She's been such a good daughter to me. And all of my children have been such good daughters. I have six left, and then Nancy is my seventh one. So I have, I still have seven children. But I, I do love the Lord. He has been so good to me. He's helped me in, in every situation. There's many times that uh, I could have, could have been hurt really bad but he, he always protected me. So I love him. I want to tell you that I, I love him today. I love him like I've never loved him before because he's been so good. He's brought me through so many trials and troubles and, and tribulations that I don't know. I, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. But I'm looking forward to seeing him too because when I go and see him, I will see the rest of my family. They're there. They're waiting on me. And I, I'm glad that you put up with me this morning. But, and like I say, I had, I've had this problem ever since I was in the eighth grade. I sang in contests. And that, that was the last time I sang in a contest. I got stage fright, and they had to help me off the stage. Uh, so hopefully you won't have to help me off, but I might have to have a little help going down the stairs. <laughs> but anyway, I love God. Love him so much. Thank you. I don't think there's anything more important or more wonderful than for any one of us to discover a real love for God and then to be able to share that with others. That's what it's all about. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Mary Ellen. We, our ushers are going to come forward and we're going to receive tithe, offering and faith promise gifts this morning. <coughs> I have a prayer that I'd like us to pray together as our stewardship reflection and blessing this morning. Pray with me. May God take from us all resistance to His will. May He give to us the fullness of His life and the sufficiency of His practical daily help. May the Lord send us during this week to come to those He can only serve through our unique experience of life and our very special abilities. May the Lord bring us together, even when we are apart, as we learn to be supportive of one another in our prayers and our service. Amen.
and let's sing our doxology together. <clears throat> may be seated. We are blessed this morning to have our chancel choir with us as they share with us love divine. If our children will come forward, we'll have a children's conversation together. We are so very glad to see you 
with us today as we worship God together. Today our theme is the Bible, the Word of God. And I was remembering as I was preparing for today how my mom put a Bible right next to my bed. Does anybody have a Bible next to their bed or in your room? Do you have a Bible? I hope you do. And if you can't read yet, I hope you'll ask mom and dad, please, please read the Bible to me. I want to know what the Bible says. I want to hear God speak. Well, when I was a teenager, I wasn't interested in the Bible. I didn't read the Bible. And even though my mom asked me again and again, hey boy, why don't you read the Bible? Have you read the Bible? She even put the Bible right next to my bed. Every day I would see it there, but I wouldn't open it. I wouldn't read it. I wasn't interested. And eventually I asked my mom, please stop asking me, have I read the Bible? Why don't you read the Bible? Uh, I don't want to read the Bible. I'm not interested. I'm not breaking a law by not reading the Bible. But this is what I didn't understand. I didn't understand that my mom wanted me to discover who God was and what God's plan for my life was. I was doing a lot of bad stuff and she knew the Bible would help me. So she was trying to encourage me because underneath the Bible is God's love. God is trying to speak to us. So when we open his word, we can hear his voice. We can hear him speak to us. You want to hear God speak? Open the scripture. Open the Bible. And you will hear God speak to you. Well, the good news is, even though I wasn't interested, God was interested. And several months later, voila, I sensed God tugging at my heart. And I ended up going to worship. And in that worship service, I heard God speak to me and I went forward. And I knelt before God and I asked him to come into my life. And just like that, who can snap their fingers? Anybody? Yeah, snap, snap. Let me hear. Just like that. All of a sudden, I was interested. All of a sudden, I couldn't read enough. All of a sudden, I started studying God's word. Where did that come from? From God. God will give you the interest. God will give you the desire. God will speak to you. And so thank God for a mom who prayed. Thank God for a mom who kept encouraging me even though I wasn't interested because God finally got a hold of me and turned me around. So God wants to do the same for you. He wants to make sure that you get to know him and learn to love him. Let's pray together. Thank you for that little switch. Lord, we sure love our children. They are a great blessing to us. And we want each of them to know you, to hear your voice, to learn to love you. So I pray that they will read and study and follow your word. That as they become more and more familiar with not only the stories of the Bible, but your voice as you speak through it, that they will grow to know you and love you. We ask your blessing on them in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. And there will be candy for you when you leave worship today. We love you. You're awfully special to us. I'm always fascinated how Jesus used children again and again in his teachings, in his examples, to have faith like children, to have a sense of wonder and joy and acceptance, maybe even a simplicity. Often we get to be adults and we become complicated, we become busy. I think when God looks at us, he shakes his head and he says, what's wrong with you, boy? <laughs> Why don't you get it? You know, kids can get it just fast. Sometimes we're pretty slow in coming around. But God is very patient with us. We love our children. 
They're a great blessing to us. Join me in our prayer for illumination. <clears throat> Since we do not live by bread alone, <clears throat> but by every word that comes from your mouth, make us hunger for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life, through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. We have two scriptures today, one from the Old Testament and another from the New. The Old Testament scripture comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, reading from verse 8. Hear now the word of God. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. And from the New Testament, Paul's second letter to Timothy, reading chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. A couple of questions for you to think about. Maybe you can discuss them with your family and friends. Who or what serves as the authority in your life? When you need direction, when you're trying to figure out what to do or how to live, who becomes the authority? Who do you ask? Number two, why do you trust that person or that source of authority? Why have you put your confidence in them? And number three, do you believe that God wrote the Bible? Why or why not? To get us started this morning, I want to share with us an illustration that helps us understand what God has achieved in giving us His Holy Word. There was once a man who did not believe in either the virgin birth of Christ or of the spiritual meaning behind it, and he was skeptical about God and God's Word. He and his family lived in a farming community. His wife, however, was a devout believer who diligently raised the children in the Christian faith. Sounds kind of familiar. I think this story happens often. He sometimes gave his wife a hard time about her belief in God, and he would mock her religious practices. He would say occasionally, it's all nonsense. Why would God lower himself and become a human being like us? It's such a ridiculous story. One snowy day, the wife and the children left for church to go to worship, and like was his practice, he stayed at home. After they had departed, the winds grew stronger. Sounds like Gaiman. And a snowstorm started, finally turned into a blinding blizzard. The man sat down, relaxing before the fire, enjoying the evening. Then he heard a loud thump, something hitting against the window. A little while later, another loud thump. He looked outside, but he could not see anything. So he ventured outside for a better view. In the field near to the house, he saw of all the strangest things, a flock of geese. They were apparently flying to look for warmer areas down south, but they had been caught in the blizzard. The snow had become too blinding and too violent for the 
geese to continue flying. They were stranded on his farm with no food or shelter, unable to do little more than flutter their wings and walk around in aimless circles. The man had compassion on them. He wanted to help them. He thought to himself, the barn would be an excellent place for them to stay. It is warm. It is safe. Surely they could spend the night in the barn and wait out the storm. So he opened the barn doors for them. He waited and he waited, watching the geese, hoping they would notice the open barn doors and go inside. Nevertheless, the geese did not move near to the barn or realize what the open barn doors meant for them. So the man moved a little closer toward them to get their attention, but they just moved further and further away from him out of fear. He finally went into the house and came back with some bread. He broke the bread up and he made a trail to the barn. Maybe they would catch on. Maybe they would follow the trail of bread crumbs into the barn. However, they did not follow the trail. The man started getting frustrated. He went over and tried to shoo them, shoo them toward the barn. But now they panicked and scattered in every direction except towards the barn. Nothing he did could get them to go into the barn where there was warmth, safety, and shelter. Feeling totally frustrated, he finally exclaimed out loud, Why don't they follow me? Can't they see that this is the only place that they can survive the storm? How can I possibly get them into the one place that can save their lives. He thought for a moment and suddenly realized that these are wild geese and they will not follow a human. He said to himself, if only I could be like them, then I could save them. They would trust me, they would follow me and I could lead them into safety. At that moment, he stopped and considered what he had just said. The words reverberated in his mind. If only I could become like them, then I could save them. All of a sudden, the life of Jesus, the miracle of the incarnation, the truth of God's word dawned on him. At last, he understood God's heart toward mankind. He fell on his knees right there in the snow and thanked God. The Bible, God's Word, just who wrote it? Where did it come from? What is this best selling book all about? Year after year, the Bible remains the best selling book of all time. I think there's a reason for it. And I think the reason is, although there are human authors involved in writing the Word of God, we know who it comes from. From the one who was willing to become one of us, for the one who has spoken a language that we can understand. The one who has said, follow me. And if you follow me, you can have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm getting a little echo. You might turn it down a little. In the story, in the context of the story, God achieved what was impossible. In the story, he became one of the geese. He could communicate to them. He could show them the way to safety. He could protect their lives if they would follow him safely into the warmth and the safety of the barn. What is the Bible all about? It is that communication from God. You want to know who wrote the Bible? I am fully convinced that the Bible is God's word to us and to all who have lived before us and to all who will come after us. Who wrote it? God. God spoke. God revealed who he was. God revealed who we are. God has shown us the way 
to get to know him and find safety in an eternal relationship with him. In fact, if you'll read in the Old Testament, over 400 times you will read this statement, thus saith the Lord. What does that mean? And God spoke. You want to know if God speaks? Open the scriptures and you will hear God speak again and again and again. In context, in people's lives, but eternally you will hear a message that is applicable to your life and mine today. Not only do you hear that statement, thus saith the Lord, but you will hear the reference, and God said more than 600 times. Over a thousand times in the Old Testament alone, you will hear the reference that God said the following, that God spoke these words, that God wanted this to happen. And then when you turn to the New Testament, you will hear again and again references to God incarnate, God made flesh, Jesus becoming a goose, if you will, like us. We couldn't understand. We were afraid. We were panicked, whatever it is, until God showed up wearing our skin, speaking our language, showing us the way to safety so that we would not perish but have everlasting life. Again and again you will hear Jesus refer to his relationship with the Father, his oneness with the Father, the fact that if you've seen him, you've seen the Father. If you've heard him, you've heard the Father. His very name means God with us, Emmanuel. His mission was to come and save us. In the illustration, we're all in a blizzard. We've all lost our way. We're all threatened with extinction. But God sent us a Savior, His Son. And He says it this way, If you love me, you will obey me. You will trust my words. You will keep my commandments. You will follow me and do what I'm telling you. Who wrote the Bible? Well, God was the one who inspired. God was the one who spoke. God was the one who directed. And then people kept a record of all those conversations, all those events. We know that the earliest of our scriptures were committed to memory. We call that an oral tradition. People remembered and spoke exactly what God had done or said. Later on, when people started writing down those things, they made a written record of what had been passed on and again and again by oral tradition. Authorship, the way we know it today, if Donna Wright over there decides she wants to write a novel and spend several years working it up. She might want to put her name on the book. This book was written by Donna Wright. And if there's any royalties, earnings, they'll come to her. But in times past, in ancient times, most people wouldn't claim authorship in the way we do today. Especially in sacred scriptures, when they are recording what God has done, there is just a written record of those events so for instance the book of job we don't know who the author of the book of job was some of the psalms are clearly remembered as coming from david or asaph or whoever writings like from solomon in the proverbs are clearly attributed to him the song of songs or the song of solomon those are clearly attributed to him. The prophets that we have are clearly revelations that they received from God and whether they wrote them down or they had a scribe who wrote them down as God was speaking or as they were sharing them. We have a record, a written record, hundreds and hundreds of years after each of those prophets lived. And then in the New Testament, as we have our Gospels, whether it was John, for instance, the disciple who sat down and wrote carefully that account that we call the Gospel of John, or whether he had people around him, scribes, who he spoke to and who wrote down, we're not exactly sure. We know, for instance, Luke was like a report of investigator, and he visited with eyewitnesses, kept all the notes, and then put together his version of the Gospel. 
And then after that, he wrote Acts, the follow-on. In fact, Luke is one of the largest contributors to the New Testament in volume of work. Just two different letters or writings, but he covers a lot of material in those two. We know that Paul wrote letters, 13 letters, and he is a huge contributor into the New Testament. But behind Paul and behind Luke and behind John and behind the prophets is a God who speaks, a God who wants to reveal himself, a God who wants to develop a relationship with you and me. What is the Bible? It is a love letter from God. As he spoke in individuals' lives or acted in individuals' lives, as he delivered a community or as he brought judgment on a community, as he sent his very son to live among us and reveal who he is and what he wants for us. So when you and I open our Bible, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to hear God speak. Hear then the voice of God. Hear the, thus saith the Lord. Hear for yourself, and God said, whatever you're reading. Now there's one place in the Bible that we know clearly God even did the writing. When Moses went up to the mount, and God gave those 10 words, those 10 commandments, he wrote them in tablets of stone. But the rest of the time, others wrote. But what they wrote, they wrote from hearing from God, from walking with God, from experiencing the saving grace of God. Throughout the scripture, you will see the superintendency of God, the oversight as he writes to each of us an eternal word, a word that will save your life, a word that will lead you to safety, a word that will bring you into a close, intimate relationship with himself. This is how John puts it at the end of his gospel. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that believing you might have life in his name. God sent us somebody who we could recognize, who we could understand, who we could trust. And if we will follow him, he will lead us safely into God's purpose and God's eternity. How important is it that we understand the gift of God's word? It is the difference between life and death. It becomes for us the authority above every other. It becomes the very word of God spoken to us that teaches us to know him and if we'll let it, to love him. I remember so clearly in the beginning, I had no interest or desire to know God or love God or serve God. Even with my loving mother doing everything she knew how to help me find that, I was just not interested until one day God helped put the switch on. There's a switch in all of us. We're asleep, we're dead. But if we let God flip the switch, we'll come alive. When I came back from that worship service where I knelt and prayed, all of a sudden there was a new interest, a desire. I grabbed a hold of that Bible that had been sitting next to my bed for months, and I started reading it, and I can't read it fast enough. I can't study the truth and the meaning and the application in my life quicker enough. I start showing up to prayer meetings and to Bible studies and to worship services because all of a sudden there is a joy and a desire inside of me that God has placed there. My life wonderfully changed because of the very presence and power and word of God. Now, I must challenge you and I must challenge myself that when you come to the Bible, you must believe that God has spoken. You must believe that those words are applicable to your life. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, and you've got to bring your faith to the Word of God as well. As you open it and say, God, speak to me, show me the way, stir my desire, speak to me the reality of who you are. And if you will do that, 
He will meet you in those scriptures. He will direct your life. He will help transform you into the man or woman that he wants you to be. How do I know? I speak from personal experience, but not just mine. Millions, millions have allowed that word to become real to them, to direct their lives, to change their lives. Those who come to God must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of those who would diligently seek Him. And how do you seek Him? You seek Him as you open His Word and you allow Him to speak. You seek Him as you get on your knees and you humble yourself before Him and you say, God, forgive me and show me the way. And He will, and He does. How do you diligently seek Him as you show up in worship like we are doing today to let Him know how much you thank Him and love Him and trust Him. There is no gift, physical gift, that can exceed the value of God's Word to us as He speaks to us even today. You know, the most recent contribution into the Scriptures is about 2,000 years old. It's a really old book from old people, but it's fresh and new and alive it's able to discern your thoughts. It's able to convict your heart. It's able to change your life. You know why? Because it was spoken by the living God. And it's applicable to every person in every generation. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. His thoughts are higher than ours. His ways are different to ours. But if we will read and trust, they will become our ways and our thoughts and they will steer us into the loving arms of God. I pray you'll grab a hold of that book. I pray you'll read it and study it and memorize it and allow it to do what it can do in your life and through your life. Let us pray together. Thank you so much that you have revealed yourself to us, that you have communicated to us. Yes, people like Moses, and people like David and people like Isaiah were all a part of this unfolding message. But you guided them, you spoke to them, you directed the way these scriptures have been recorded. And today, you speak to us in fresh and new ways through those same words. The words of your son who is your exact representation, your exact image. I pray that each one of us can get to know you and love you and serve you as we study your word and hide it deep in our hearts. I pray that you will become the authority above every other authority as we remind ourselves each day and God spoke and God said, this is his word to us. We give you thanks this morning in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. will remain seated as we sing Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King
in our little illustration, the man with compassion wanted for the geese to find their way to safety. What is our application? God wants to make sure that you find your way to safety, that you learn to trust Him and hear His voice and allow Him to do what only He can do. Forgive your sins. Transform your life. Make you a part of His beloved family. I pray that you and I will allow that to happen, that we can join Mary Ellen in saying with boldness, I love God. And I'm looking forward to seeing him and all the loved ones who have graduated ahead of me. We're going to sing together, I have decided to follow Jesus as we prepare to pray for the needs of others. Anyone who would like to come forward and join me here at the chancel rail, please feel free to do so as we all pray together. Father, I'm so grateful that you showed up right in the midst of the blizzard when each of us is stranded when each of us is threatened with eternal death. You have compassion on us. You have found a way to speak our language and to lead us to safety. Thank you for sending us your son who became the God-man, who spoke to us the truth. We remember his words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We remember him saying again and again, follow me. We choose to follow. We make that decision to trust you and believe you and do what you have told us to do, obey you. I pray that each of us would know the joy of new birth. Each of us know the wonder of having your spirit dwell inside of us. Each of us know the amazing gift of transformation where we can say, I am a new creation because of what Jesus has done for me. Thank you, Lord. Help your word to grow clearer and more and more authoritative in our lives where we will read and study and memorize and believe what you have said and do what you have asked of us. We pray especially today for Linda Hitch as she recovers from her surgery. We pray for, for Kim McKinnon who had to have a second knee replacement and is recovering from that. Thank you that Emma's doing so well, walking without a cane. We pray for Monty as he recovers from open heart surgery. Continue to pray for Robert Henson as he deals with polymyositis. Thank you for his improvement, for his mobility and strength that has returned some. We continue to wrap him up in our love and prayers. Be with all our loved ones 
who have lost husbands or wives or sons, daughters. Be their companion. Help them to find joy in this new season of life, joy and purpose and blessing. We pray for the upcoming elections as we prayerfully select leaders. We pray for men and women who have a deep faith in you and a commitment to your word who will lead us in a bright future. Thank you for our democracy. We pray blessings on our president, our senators, our representatives and governor. We pray for all our local leaders that you would help each of them serve the common good. Give them wisdom and courage to do what is right. We want to be a nation whose God is the Lord. We want to follow your truth. We remember what you said, Jesus, that you came to testify of the truth. Help us to believe you and do what you said. We pray especially for the upcoming Pioneer Days celebration. Keep all of our our athletes safe and our animals. We pray for a wonderful celebration of our heritage. We give you thanks for all the blessings that we enjoy right here in the panhandle. We are a grateful people as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What a blessing it is to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. All are welcome to enjoy the wonderful gift of fellowship and belonging and blessing that comes from sitting at the Lord's table. Christ the Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore let us confess our sin before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us, each and every one of us. While we were yet sinners, that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus, the Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water, and by the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
We now offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And now we pray, O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on each one of us gathered here on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, those who are redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. If those who are going to assist would come forward, I will serve them first, and then together with their help, we will serve the rest of the congregation. I'm reminded of a man who would never participate in communion. He didn't feel worthy enough. So when the communion elements were offered, he always refused until one day the pastor sat with him and said, what's going on? I know you're faithful in worship, but when it comes to communion, you always say, no, no, no. He said, well, pastor, I don't feel worthy to sit at the Lord's table. And the pastor said, none of us are worthy. None of us can earn a position there. The grace of God comes and forgives us and claims us, and He makes us worthy. Oh, okay. Next week, he was glad to join. I hope that each one will hear that, that God invites you, God forgives you, God makes you worthy of being a part of His wonderful family. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are made one in Christ. The bread that we break and the bread that we share is a sharing in the body of Christ. This cup that we raise, this cup over which we give thanks, is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Regina, the body of Christ broken for you. John, the body of Christ broken for you. Randy, the body of Christ broken for you. Jackie, the body of Christ broken for you. Carrie, the body of Christ broken for you. Steve, body of Christ broken for you. Sandy, body of Christ broken for you. Matthew, body of Christ broken for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. John, blood of Christ shed for you. Randy, blood of Christ shed for you. Jackie, blood of Christ shed for you. Carrie, blood of Christ shed for you. Steve, blood of Christ shed for you. Sandy, blood of Christ shed for you. Matthew, the blood of Christ shed for you. is set. The Lord Jesus is here to serve us again. Come, receive the wonderful gifts of God for the people of God.
My prayer for you this morning, my prayer for myself, is that each one of us would hear the voice of God as He speaks through His Word and Holy Spirit, that each one of us would learn to know Him and love Him and enjoy the eternal life that He gives. Amen. prayer for you today my prayer for myself is that each one of us would hear the wonderful voice of God speak to us through his word and his Holy Spirit that each of us would come to saving faith and a deep abiding love for the God who loves us that we would allow him to lead us into eternal life amen My prayer for you this morning, my prayer for myself, is that each of us would hear God's voice through His Holy Word and through His Holy Spirit, that we would come to a deep saving faith and discipleship, that we would grow to know Him and love Him and allow Him to lead us into eternal life. Amen. My prayer for you this morning, my prayer for myself, is that each of us would hear God's voice through His Holy Word and Holy Spirit, that we would come to saving faith and deep discipleship, allowing Him to lead us into everlasting life. Amen. My prayer for you today, my prayer for myself, is that each of us would hear the voice of God through His Holy Word and Holy Spirit, that each of us would know that deep saving faith that He gives and discipleship that will lead us into everlasting life. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sir.
Please join me as we pray the prayer after the communion service. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to listen to Holy Spirit by Francesca Pellisteri. And I pray that as you listen to this beautiful worship song, you will hear the voice of God speaking to you. And stand with me this morning, receive God's blessing and God's challenge as we leave worship and go into the mission field that God has asked us to serve. Hide God's word in your heart so that you avoid sin and enjoy abundant life. Amen. <laughs> 